Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Kafka Key Concepts tutorial. Today we'll dive into more key concepts in Kafka, including brokers, replicas, producer acts, and both Zookeeper and KRAFT. Understanding these will help you better grasp Kafka's internals and use it more efficiently in real-world projects. In practice, Kafka typically operates in a clustered setup. A Kafka cluster can consist of a few servers, dozens, or even hundreds of them, and you can scale the number of servers up or down as needed. These servers in Kafka are referred to as brokers. Each broker in a Kafka cluster has a unique integer identifier called a broker ID. For example, if we have a Kafka cluster with three servers, their IDs might be 1, 2, and 3. For simplicity, we can refer to them as broker 1, broker 2, and broker 3. To increase system throughput and availability, Kafka tries to evenly distribute a topic's partitions across different brokers. For instance, imagine we have a topic called Topic A with three partitions, PA0, PA1, and PA2. Kafka might assign PA0 to Broker 1, PA1 to Broker 2, and PA2 to Broker 3. Similarly, for another topic, Topic B, which has five partitions, PB0 to PB4, Kafka might distribute them as follows. PB0 and PB3 on Broker 1, PB1 and PB4 on Broker 2, and PB2 on Broker 3. As you can see, Kafka tries to evenly distribute the partitions across the brokers for both Topic A and Topic B. However, simply distributing the partitions isn't enough to guarantee high availability. What happens if one of the brokers goes down? The partitions on that broker would become unavailable. But don't worry, in the next section, we'll discuss how Kafka ensures partition availability using its replication mechanism. Now, if the partitions of a topic are spread across different brokers, how do producers and consumers know where those partitions are located? This brings us to a new concept, the bootstrap server. In practice, every broker in a Kafka cluster holds metadata about the entire cluster. This metadata includes the list of brokers in the cluster, the available topics, how many partitions each topic has, and where these partitions are distributed across the brokers. Therefore, as long as a producer or consumer can connect to any one broker, also known as a bootstrap server, it can retrieve the cluster's metadata and determine where the partitions are located, enabling it to start producing or consuming data. Let's take a look at how Kafka clients connect to the cluster. First, whether you're a producer or a consumer, you need to configure the Kafka cluster's bootstrap.servers address, which includes one or more broker addresses. It's common to configure multiple broker addresses to prevent connection issues if one broker becomes unavailable. For example, in this case, we have configured three brokers, Broker 1, Broker 2, and Broker 3. When the client starts, it establishes a long-lived connection with one of the brokers, let's say Broker 2, and requests the cluster metadata from it. The broker then responds with the current metadata, including the list of brokers, topics, partitions, and their distribution. The client catches this metadata and, during subsequent production or consumption, uses the catched metadata to quickly locate where the topic's partitions are hosted across the brokers and sends requests accordingly. So far, there's still one key question regarding availability. What happens if a broker fails? If a broker goes down, all the partitions hosted on it become unavailable. To address this, Kafka introduces a replication mechanism. In Kafka, each topic's partition can have one or more replicas. The number of replicas is determined by the replication factor. For example, if the replication factor is 1, it means there's only one copy of the partition with no redundancy. This setup is typically used in development or testing environments. In production, to ensure higher availability, the replication factor is usually set to more than 1, with 3 being a common setting. For instance, suppose we have topic A with two partitions, P0 and P1. If we set the replication factor to 3, Kafka will create three replicas for each partition and distribute them across different brokers whenever possible. For example, the replicas of partitions P0 and P1 could be spread across three brokers. With this replication mechanism, even if a broker goes down, 
for instance, if Broker 1 fails, Kafka can still access data from the replicas stored on Broker 2 or Broker 3, ensuring the high availability of partition data. In Kafka, each partition has one leader and several followers. The leader handles all read and write requests, while the followers replicate the data from the leader. Followers that are in sync with the leader are called in sync replicas, ISR. For example, in this scenario, the leader of partition P0 is on broker 1, which handles the producer and consumer requests. The followers, currently on broker 2 and broker 3, are part of the ISR and replicate data from the leader. For partition P1, its leader is on broker 3, while the two ISR members are on broker 1 and broker 2. If the leader of a partition goes down, Kafka will elect a new leader from the ISR set. For instance, if broker 1 fails, causing the leader of partition P0 to become unavailable, Kafka will elect a new leader from P0's ISR set. If the replica on broker 2 is selected as the new leader, it will take over the production and consumption requests, and the remaining replicas will continue as followers, syncing the data. With this replication and failover mechanism, Kafka ensures data availability even when some brokers fail. Now that we understand Kafka's replication mechanism, let's dive deeper into how producers work. To better balance reliability and performance, Kafka offers three acknowledgement modes for producers, each corresponding to a different level of message reliability. In this example, let's say we have a partition, P0, with its leader on Broker 2 and two in-sync replicas, ISR on Broker 1 and Broker 3. Now imagine a producer sending data to this partition. The first acknowledgement mode is AX equals zero. This is the simplest and fastest mode. After the producer sends a message, it doesn't wait for any acknowledgement. In other words, once the message is sent, the producer assumes the task is done. It doesn't wait for feedback from the leader or any followers. This mode offers high performance because the producer can continue sending messages without waiting for an acknowledgement. However, there's a big downside. If there's a network issue or the leader fails, messages may be lost and the producer won't even know about it. This mode is suitable for scenarios where reliability isn't critical, such as regular logs or non-essential monitoring data. The second acknowledgement mode is AX equals 1. In this mode, the producer waits for the leader partition to confirm that the message has been successfully written to its local log file. Only after receiving this acknowledgement does the producer consider the message successfully sent. The follower partitions replicate the data asynchronously and the producer doesn't need to wait for their confirmation. This mode strikes a balance between performance and reliability. Compared to AX equals zero, the message is more reliable since it's at least written to the leader. However, if the leader crashes before the message is replicated to the followers, there's still a chance of message loss. This mode is suitable for most scenarios because it offers decent performance with a reasonable level of reliability. The third acknowledgement mode is AX equals all, also configurable as AX equals minus one. This is the highest level of message acknowledgement in Kafka. In this mode, the producer waits not only for the leader to confirm the message, but also for enough ISR members to acknowledge it. Only when the required number of ISR members have confirmed, does the producer consider the message successfully sent. The minimum number of required ISR members is set by the min.insync.replicas configuration. For example, let's say min.insync.replicas is set to 2. When the producer sends a message to the leader partition, the leader first writes the message to its local log, then broadcasts it to all ISR members. Once the ISR members replicate the message, they send their acknowledgement back to the leader. After receiving confirmation from at least two ISR members, the leader responds to the producer confirming that the message has been successfully committed. If the leader doesn't receive enough ISR acknowledgements, it will return a failure response to the producer. Also, if there are fewer than two ISR members, such as if replicas go down or go offline, the leader will reject the right request. This mode provides the highest level of reliability. 
Even if multiple brokers fail, as long as the remaining replicas meet the minimum ISR requirement, data won't be lost. However, because it requires waiting for multiple replicas to confirm, this mode comes with lower performance. It's ideal for scenarios where data reliability is critical, such as financial transactions, order processing, or other mission-critical business data. Lastly, let's talk about another key component in Kafka clusters, Zookeeper. As Kafka's metadata storage and coordination center, Zookeeper is responsible for maintaining key information like broker lists, topics, partitions, and also plays a major role in the election of the Kafka cluster controller. In a Zookeeper cluster, nodes are also categorized as leader and followers. The leader processes client requests and coordinates updates, while followers replicate data and handle read requests. Zookeeper clusters usually consist of three, five, or seven nodes, an odd number, to ensure consistency and availability, even if some nodes fail. While Zookeeper is essential to Kafka's operation, it also adds complexity to deployment and management. As the number of partitions grows, Zookeeper's performance and scalability can become a bottleneck. To address these issues, Kafka introduced the KRAFT architecture starting from version 2.8. KRAFT uses the RAFT protocol for metadata management and cluster coordination, eliminating the need for Zookeeper. This simplifies Kafka's deployment process and improves scalability and performance. Currently, KRAFT is still in its experimental phase. However, according to Kafka's roadmap, future versions, starting with version 4, will completely eliminate the dependency on Zookeeper and fully adopt KRAFT. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Byte Vigor channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. See you in the next video.